Good morning, UCY.TV radio listeners. This is Lonnie Clark with the Age of Fission radio show. Today is call-in Friday. The phone number is 718-717-8296. And uh, Dana Durnford was going to co-host with me, and I called him this morning a few minutes before the show, like I thought we agreed, and uh, he did not answer the phone, so I'm sure he has a good reason. Maybe he's going to call in. I texted in the call-in number, uh, but if not, he'll be with us regularly, so, uh, you know, this is my thing about Dan. Even if he just didn't feel like it this morning and was too, didn't even want to have to talk to me and <laughs> decided to change his mind, I don't care. He can come back anytime he wants because I love the work that Dana has done. I honestly don't know the guy personally. Do I love his character that we see on the radio and who he, he, we hear? I believe him to be true. Yes, because he cares about the planet so deeply. He dragged himself out of a wheelchair with his friends. He had friends, his family, his son. This is not like a made-up story. He went out there and took pictures of the coastline on Canada because he knew what it was going to do. And what was the story of the week this week? The crabs, the crabs all along. We saw pictures on the Internet of massive amounts of crabs dying around the planet. Southern California says, no, can't eat the crabs. They're too radioactive. Really? Well, they're saying it's red tide, right? But are they testing for radiation? You want to know what? Specifically, no. They are not testing for radiation. And the kinds of radiation they're testing for is interesting. I saw a story this morning, and I, you know what, I did not earmark it. It was on my cell phone. And uh, it, it will easily find it. The radiation, this was really subtle. The story was, you, I don't want to m- 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 uh, destroy this man's name. He's a scientist who was studying the radiation in Tokyo folks. He's studying the radiation in Tokyo, and he said that the particles that they've discovered of cesium-137, it's a new idea about cesium-137, which heretofore they thought only to disperse very widely in water, which is why the cesium-137 in the rain is extremely like stay out of the rain. That's for real. In America, they're like, oh, you're just being ridiculous. No, I live in Oregon, and I tell people, stay out of the rain. You want to not get cancer? Stay out of the rain. That's why homeless people have such a high rate. But back to this story. The cesium-137 disperses in water. This scientist discovered that the cesium in Fukushima, because of the hot particles, melded it to uh, glass particles and dispersed it and they have no idea what that means they've never studied that they've never actually seen that so they don't know if there's an interaction because the cesium is extremely high so it's you know it's it's very interesting what happens i have i have not read the study i read the story so I am going to do some follow-up on the story. This, You know, this is the thing about this Fukushima stuff. It's like a part-time job. Seriously. Because the people who are supposed to be telling us are talking about the Dumb and Dumber show. You know, I know on this radio show, especially on Call In Fridays, and the phone number is 718-717-8296. If somebody wants to call in and not hear the sound of my voice, yay, there's Dina. I bet you he'll be calling me. Let me see if I can call him or if he's going to call us in a minute. He just popped up. So let me see him. Let me get, Let me give him a wee call. How about that? Instead of having you guys call in, let me call him. See if he'll answer. No. Nothing plugged in yet. So I'll let him call us. Dana, if you're listening to us, please give us a call. 718-717-8296. So I saw Dana pop up on my Skype notification. You know, we do this radio show through the Skype menu. And it's really no secret, which is why we ask people to contribute because it costs money (laughs) getting servers, getting things up, making things work. So please make a donation video. Hey, is that uh, Dana? Yeah. Good morning, Lonnie. Uh, Good morning, Dana. How are you? I thought we were starting next week. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I put it up 
on the Facebook that said, uh, <laughs> Dana and everybody, I'm sure that you have many of your fans that follow me on Facebook that are listening. Sure. So thank you for joining us. Did you see that story? Let me jump right into it because I was dumbfounded. Did you see that story on the cesium 137 in Tokyo? For, uh, almost half a trillion. Well, they discovered that it's not, they, you know how they think that cesium disperses in water. That's how it gets around. The oh, the glass sign, particles. Yes. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay, good. Because I don't. I was sitting here bastardizing what the story was. <laughs> so. Oh, absolutely. No. That well, is, that's a serious, that's a very serious discovery, wasn't it? That's what they said. You know what really was subtle about that story, Dana, that was really interesting? Sure. They were studying the radiation in Tokyo. In Tokyo, where they plan on having the Olympics, but they weren't saying any. Here's this. He's saying, "Oh well, we're taking we're taking samples from air filters in Tokyo." That was the first couple of days, uh, and so they found over four hundred and fifty uh, billion becquerels, atomic decays of cesium one thirty seven. And for folks who don't understand it. Uh, the reactors are uranium, not cesium. And then there's 100 times more strontium, 90 for every cesium-137 created. Say that, 100 times more strontium? 90, yeah. And strontium-90 is a bone sinker. Seeker. For, every, for every what? For every uh, cesium-137 created. So there's a ratio known for the mix, uh, mixed fuel... For each reactor, and these reactors were producing a ratio of 100 to 1 for every cesium. And so that's what a cesium, of course, is a tracer. And they, and they used that in, uh, to extrapolate through mathematics Holy what the, the ratios are. Yeah. And so, so you're not only me that. There's a hundred times more, like we're reading this story and he's talking about so much Becquerels or whatever. Do that exponentially a hundred times? That's how, that's how they've always done this to us. That's how they manipulated us and hid it away from us with that, that whole spectrum of it. Is, yeah, it's 100 times more strontium-90 per every single 137 that's made. So it's over and the, and 137 top. is uh, is man-made. Is, uh, yeah, and 137 is made from, one, is made from uranium-235, uh, neptunium-241, and I can't remember. There's another one. So they're all man-made uh, elements, and then the byproduct Wait of those Wait a minute, uranium-235 is also man-made? Yeah, uranium-235 is man-made from the 238 uranium. Is 238, is 238 naturally occurring? And 238 is the natural, the original stuff. So that's their argument. Look, it's in the natural uranium, so it doesn't matter. That's right. what I have been told. This is where they fuck right. with my head because yeah. I don't understand this science. So, but what, this is, this is what's happening. Their argument that it, because it comes from a naturally occurring, in fact, I just had that conversation yesterday that I didn't, right. couldn't wrap my head around because it didn't seem to make sense. This is why naturally uranium, naturally, that's why they dig up the naturally occurring uranium. And then, and then they everything strip is strip away a few atoms and they end up with 235. Yeah, that's right. And they extrapolate to 235. And 235 is uh, all they can, is for weapons grade. You can use uranium 238 for power, but you can't use it. And, but you can't, you know, it's a refined. You take, uh, 400 train car loads of iron ore and then uh, a couple of hundred train car loads of chemicals and then uh, swimming pools of water and you mix all that together and you get a gram and you keep doing that until you got enough for a reactor and then that refined product will With produce all the chemicals and isotopes. mixed up uranium. So the depleted uranium is all actually mixed up with a bunch of other stuff besides it's like not just the uranium. It's mixed up with a truckload of chemicals. To get that original gram. Right. So you got 400 train car loads you take out of an iron ore, which is just iron ore. And then you break that down with chemicals. But out of 400 train car loads, train car loads, you end up with a gram. Of uranium, two thirty-five. Or ultimately, that's that's what you're doing. You're breaking it down to get to that stuff. 
And so then all of that stuff is released into the environment, all those chemicals and all that waste and all those tailing pan um, where they throw all the other stuff. All Can the I ask you to jump in and ask a question here? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Because the chemicals that they mix in, are any of those chemicals the same kind of chemicals they use like for Monsanto GM, making GMOs or making uh, automobiles or any other type of industry that's toxic or any of that stuff with similar chemicals? Yeah, there's... There, uh, these chemicals are very harsh chemicals. These are very dangerous and very controlled chemicals. These and these are uh, these are man-made synthetic Man. chemical chemicals again, right? These are yeah. Because that's another part of the harm that probably exacerbates the harm from the the uranium. Right, and but anyway, to get it down, and then they like the reactors are taken. Um, 3,450 assemblies. Each assembly is 80 fuel rods. And in an each rod is 80 Wait a minute. Pounds, I, always get a, I always get confused. I mean, you know how many times I've heard this? Yeah. But I can't. I'm, thank you for coming on my show and allowing me to ask questions. Because I... No, that's how it works. I, I need this because... This is why it's difficult. We get out there and we meet people that are like, well, I'm educated and I know about this and blah, blah, blah. And they just like, wah, wah, wah. And I, you know what I always tell them? You know what the net result is? We have dead crabs. We have no more sardines. Yeah. Look in our ocean. Yeah. If we have a nuclear volcano going on, we have an event that no one has ever seen on this planet. Right. And the entire world is acting like, blah, blah, emperor has no clothes. Everything is fine. No. There's the we're 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 being led around like the Pied Piper. It's really truly happening that way to the majority of the population, and the Pied Piper is is the smut machine itself, and they they know what they're doing. They're this is engineered, and uh, this is uh, well thought out through think tanks and everything else how to defeat any opposition. They put an enormous amount of time, energy, and effort into making sure that we don't get in their way. And they have an agenda. Oh, that's a great statement. They do say that again because that is actually so true, Dana. Oh, say they, that again. Yeah. They, well, it's hard enough we can. But I mean, they spend an enormous amount of time, monetary energy, planning, and organizations, creating organizations to control us, literally, to, to control everything we see and everything we think about and, and control our thoughts, literally. To direct us to to think we thought of those thoughts as original assets on a balance sheet, baby. Yeah, that's, that's what right. I say in my intro. <laughs> and that's what they're doing to the population on purpose. For since the beginning of time, they've been doing this to us, manipulating the population. So people uh, naturally, once again, they'll attack uh, people who smoke cigarettes and. You know, including family members or friends or strangers, they'll attack those people, and they don't even understand what they're doing. But they're conditioned to do that, and that is a reflex for them now, even though they don't understand what they're saying. And so they'll say, "Oh, nicotine will give you cancer." And as we talked about before, it's not the nicotine; it's seven thousand chemicals in your cigarette. Right. And then you look at Vietnam War. The Gulf of Tonkin was the start of the war where the Vietnamese attacked the American ship allegedly. Now we find out that didn't happen. And so we went to war for something that didn't happen. And that's from uh, Robert McNamara and from the captain of the ship that was allegedly attacked. You know what did happen? Shitloads of profit. That's what war is about. We now are the United States. When we talk about, oh, we're the empire, that's too easy. We're war profiteers. Our major industry, when a, that's nationalism, yeah. when a country's more than 50% of its budget goes into the military, something is wrong with the country. We don't, if we're free people, we don't need a budget that cre that's more than 50%. The mob don't even put 50% of their profits into the into mob. Into defending themselves. If yeah, you need that's to right, defend yeah. yourself that badly, you need to correct You aren't your defending behavior. yourself. Well, You're not defending yourself. Exactly. When you go when you go up Uh-oh. Dana, we lost you. So call us back. And I'll just hold on. <laughs> Someone didn't like what we were talking about there, folks. <laughs> 
So he, let's see if we can get Dana back on the line. You know, this is what I was thinking about. I saw this article this morning about the Democratic Party. And, you know, I've been saying Bernie Sanders because I am a Republican not a Republican. I don't think I could ever vote for a Republican, to be honest. That's why I can't vote for Hillary Clinton. I think she has a Republican agenda of murder, death, kill. That's how I view the Republican. Well, she has that history, yeah. Yeah, war profiteering. It's war. Pro- it's down to war profiteering. And I saw this article that said, oh, we're going to have a civil war in Philadelphia. Fuck them. Well, there's, we don't need to go to them. Like, if they're not going to apologize for stealing and rigging the nomination and trying to do everything they can to lie to us to push Hillary Clinton down our throats, then fuck them. We're not going to vote for you. Then who cares? It's not, we don't need a civil war. It's, it's a political party. Screw off. We could just choose to not vote, but I'm not going to do that because that's what they prefer. So fuck them. Excuse my language. So- <laughs> yeah, we're supposed to vote. Not that voting means anything. Well, but you know what? You know why a voting does not mean anything? Because the muscle of our weights of our votes are left sitting our asses on the sofa. In America, only 18% of the actual people who are registered, who are qualified to vote, can vote. When they say, oh, we got a 60% turnout, we got a 60% turnout of the registered voters. Well, when only 25% of the voters register, <laughs> really? Yeah. That, how much is that? 18, 20 percent, maybe at a great election turnout. No wonder the oligarchs are freaking hitting us over the head in. Have you 500 people showed up? Did you see that art festival against the uranium mining out in the desert? Wait, they had this festival yeah, in it. Australia. I just saw a video this morning. In Australia? Uh, yes. Okay. It, it's so awesome. And yeah. they all these people, they wore like these costumes and they were very insulting. Of course, you know, the pe- people in America want to do that. But frankly, we're scared of our police. We are a military state. Let's be clear. I am spied on outside the front of my door is a box directly looking into my window right at my desk right now while I'm talking. Hi, guys. With a yeah. camera pointed right at me with absolutely no attempt to hide it. <laughs> They they can't live uh, with us watching them, with us being the checks and balances. They can't do or get away with the things they want to get away with or create the environment they create if we pay attention. That's so, right. And, yeah, That's and slowly right. but surely, the whole environment now has been uh, focused on controlling everybody and demonizing anybody for saying something different. It's uh, – and but – the whole point is that the minute that somebody speaks out against them, they freak out, they panic, they hit buttons, they go, they they lose their minds, they become vindictive, they become, they go to mm-hmm. war against that person that dare speak out and have another narrative. How many people have they said that have been dead around the Bush crime family or dead around the Clintons? Anybody? Hey. Well, the Clintons are part of the Bush crime family. That's why there's so many dead people around them. <laughs> I mean, for real. There's I mean, a saying about Hillary, wherever Hillary goes, uh, Blackwater is soon to slaughter. Wow, and that's really? true. Yeah, that's true. Because when Hillary was a war hawk, when she was in the government, a higher ranking government war hawk, that's what she done. She pushed weapons and she pushed war. And because that's the, every one of these people that were allegedly, uh, you know, a leader of the country in America, and including Canada, this is their ideology. This is the, who their, you know, who 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 runs them. This is who funded them. Is that war machine? There's, and that's why the war machine in America now can contribute whatever it wants. When before uh, there was a limit on what corporations. Once again, you you're, you're getting back to what the problem is: is corporate personhood. So there's no one accountable to these joint corporations. But if you've got a corporation, a normal one, you're accountable. And so a joint corporation has diplomatic immunity. Mark Zuckerberg can't get a criminal record. Mark Zuckerberg won't be vilified in the media for no say matter what again. crime how, it is. How did, say that again. You're saying that a joint court or because of the... Corporate trade, trade agreements in the corporate personhood that a joint venture cannot uh, yes because he he could be he could get a criminal record if he did anything p- 
personally and he was convicted personally. As a corporation, no. But that's only a corporation that's on the stock exchange. That doesn't apply to a normal business. That's right. Yeah, they they run on a charter. And, but a corporation has put itself into the untouchable zone. And that's not supposed to exist. They piggybacked off the slavery law, illegal amendment, to give themselves those privileges. And that's why they're so harmful, and that's why they're so dangerous, and that's why they're so destructive, and that's why they're so powerful. Well, it's because there's no check and balance. Well, the, not only just no check and balance, even if there is a check and balance, people get bought off. Like, they're just like, uh, we have seen, uh, uh, look at, you know, this is why I like my Senator Jeff Merkley here in Oregon. He went to the United States Senate. He beat out a Republican here. We beat out uh Gordon Smith, and who we went to go ask him what he was going to do about uh, the lies of Cheney, like when it was coming out. He's like, "Oh, well, we're working on it. We're working on it." That's what he would say. Well, yes, we know these facts. We're working on it. So he got beat in Oregon, and Jeff Merkley is now the junior senator to the hawk. Ron Wyden, who I think is a Republican, he's been one of the people who's been seriously intimidated. Jeff Merkley went to the Senate and created a great piece of legislation to amend the Price-Anderson Act, which holds some member of a corporation uh, liable for the harm they knowingly cause to the human human species and to the environment. If they harm our planet or human beings or anything, that person can be held up accountable in a court of law because right now in the nuclear industry, if a CEO of an organization, and only in the nuclear industry, the coal industry does not have this, these major cor other corporations don't have it, only the nuclear industry, if you knowingly or unknowingly cause harm in the United States, you are not held liable for any reason, past, present, or future. You walk away. That's why they are destroying our entire East Coast and our mid, I mean, we. our country is just one big toxic slew of nuclear waste. If you look at the map, it is shocking. That's yeah, the nuclear waste in the holding site, sir. Everywhere. It's an it's an offense to humanity. It's an offense it's to It's not supposed to exist. And it, under laws, it would, a nuclear wouldn't exist and never could have existed. And so then every nuclear scientist has breached uh, their oaths and beyond imagination, has turned their back on their own friends and families and loved ones and communities and the entire ecosystem. Every nuclear scientist and everybody who plays a part in the industry perpetrates a lie on purpose that is like bananas or walking in the sunshine and getting on an airplane is just one of the many lies. And then the storage law, they can't store it. And then the contract, the original doctrines, the original charters for nuclear power plants was nothing got off the site. Nothing. And right away, they could not uh, meet that obligation. Under any circumstances, there was no way to meet that obligation because of the noble gases that these things release us. And they knew that in the 1940s. There was no illusion about it. The illusion was that we didn't know any better. And so they had to keep that illusion in order so they can do what they were doing. And what they do, they can't exist in uh, comparison with any other energy company. They, they're completely 100% subsidized. Every aspect of them, including the Glass-Steagall and these other laws that were meant to hold them accountable were barriers to them that were removed because they couldn't exist without it. And then the weapons that manifested from that, like the munitions, depleted uranium, you got McAllister bomb manufacturer in McAllister, Oklahoma. All day, there's 1,800 people lived there and they all work making depleted uranium munitions. And these munitions, these are war crimes. Every time you fire these things off, these are dirty bombs. These meet all the all the criteria for a dirty bomb. And that they had original manuals. It was originally called Dolram, depleted uranium low-level radioactive material. And somehow they got rid of the acronym and ended up with DU, depleted uranium. There's nothing depleted about it. It has gone through a chain reaction. And so its half-life is 4.5 billion years. So it, it will never deplete. Yeah, and then the byproduct of it uh, that they can't use is poured into online trenches. Like Hanford has 
41 miles of unlined trenches where they dump unbelievable, unbelievable material. But if, if it was a line trench, uh, then you can end up with a chain reaction and that trench from all these heavy metals coming in contact with each other. You can start fission on its own. Oh my God, that's right. why they didn't do it in the... Because that was a part of that story that I, I didn't understand. Why. Bechtel didn't line them intentionally. They were ordered by the government to line them. This, the report said that, that I read said that they were required to line them and that they did not line them. They decided to save money. It wasn't about saving money. I bet you those scientists knew that that suggestion would cause a serious problem. Right, no, they knew that. And they dumped uh, they 56 billion gallons directly into the soil at Hanford. You would bankrupt the America cleaning up carbon-free Hanford, right? And everything they say about nuclear carbon-free, uh, even when it's burning, is not carbon-free. But the whole process, just to get your hands on nuclear, is ripping the mountain up, mountains apart. The Navajo Nation, the, the native Navajo Nation has 15, just, just their little spot has 15,000 abandoned uranium mines and the tailing ponds and all the chemicals and harshness and toxins and dioxins that uh, was used there is all abandoned and then he moved on to another place. So 15,000 abandoned mines would break, would totally uh, break the country trying to clean that up. So it was Hanford and that and then every nuclear site you got and you got uh, hundreds of these nuclear holding sites. None of them are actual waste sites. You, there's nowhere on the planet where there's an actual waste. Switzerland allegedly has a, a suppository for the planet, or a repository, whatever you want to call it, where they put it down in, in a hole in the planet. And then that has been shown down the road will be, become uh, back into the environment. Even though they might put it a half mile down into the planet, if you have an accident chain reaction, right. it can find its way back into the environment, but it can pollute the entire planet. Yeah. So why would we why would we go after something like that? Because it's the perfect weapon against everything on the planet. See, a large part of that system out there, they worship Satan, they worship Lucifer. This is and, real. We're not yeah, joking, would, folks. This is why when people, people say, why yeah. would they do that? This is real. They really How many people worship no the Bible? For human life. That's not a, just a light sentence. How many people worship the Bible? Okay. Well, think about if you got a political party, you got to, you know, you have these votes where there are 51, uh, 49 percent in the votes because half like one half and half like the other mm -hmm. half. It's literally like that in religion. Where half worships a god, and a large, and the rest of them, not the rest of them, but a big percentage of them actually worship Satan, and those are the people that end up in positions of power. Hmm. You got Kathleen Higley, uh, is a radiation expert in the United States. She's right here in Corvallis. Right, I know and her she's. Name. I looked her up. She's kind of difficult to find. And yeah, and she seems to be a relatively obscure person. But she's in charge of setting the policies for em, for employees, for people in communities about nuclear, mm -hmm. and for uh, victims in the hospitals for cancer treatment. Mm -hmm. That's that's the stupidest thing imaginable. Why do we use nuclear on people in the hospital? We use nuclear on every animal on the species, uh, every animal species on the planet, and it killed them, every one of them. Throughout the last 70 years, no animal has survived. So why would we take that and put that into a human or a child? So why would the government steal our children and give them chemotherapy, which starts out with chemicals and ends up with nuclear, and every one of them, uh, none of them have an extended lifespan, and 97% of them die before they would have died without the chemotherapy. And so the chemotherapy, why would we allow that to continually take place when the evidence is overwhelming? It's because that was the agenda. Why do we do it in every single hospital? Why is that somehow the solution when the solution has never worked? And so why do we steal people's children? Because we create a legis legislation that said that if they got cancer, we got to give them chemotherapy. And so that's the death sentence for the children. That's and true. Parents. You are required to give them chemotherapy. If you're required. Child, in How the United did that States, ever happen? Please. I personally would How not ever do that. How the fuck did we ever fucking end up with that? 
I mean, honestly, because chemo, well, you know, the thing is, you can go get alternative healing and get well. Like when not I, legal. well, not legally, if you're a minor, you can't do that to your minor. They'll come and put you in jail, take the kid and finish the kid off. That's how it was, that's every headline says that, see? And so alternative, like you're talking about, is a good idea, but not if you're a minor. If you're a minor and you got cancer, the doctor will oh, steal. Oh, that's oil. right. You know what, Dana? I read, this is, when you were talking about the reality of that, uh, of why they had those online trenches, I'm going to dig out that story. This is exactly what I mean. This is why shows like this, Levy the Levy Show, uh, Kevin Blunt, people's shows are met, you know, the Post Ignorance Project, this show, we're working on getting another show on this radio station, and I'm not going to say anything about it, but I know we are, uh, to discuss the real truth about radiation and the harm that it's causing, because this is a catastrophic emergency that people don't know about. This story that I read led me to believe it was a cost savings measure. A journalist wrote those words, a cost savings measure, instead of saying, they knew that it would cause a catastrophic event. Do you get it? They don't want to scare people, so they're like, oh, it's a cost savings measure. This is how they fucking, excuse my language, this is how they work. That's the outrage of it. This is how the media works with the nuclear industry to lie and kill our planet. Which brings me to this. Well, look, uh, let me let me jump in on this because I see we're at 8.33. I have two things that I'd like to get in. First, it is call-in Friday, so if anybody, would you mind if anybody called and gave us a question or something, Dana? Oh, no, far it away. Okay, I'm going to give out the number at 718-717-8296, and you are listening to the Age of Fission radio show with Lonnie Clark and my guest co-host, Dana Dernford, which, cross our fingers, he'll be able to join us on a regular basis, because as you can see, his brain is filled. He studied uranium. The second thing I'd like to say is... Miss Milky the Clown, who all, many of us know, she's a YouTube uh, video channel, Miss Milky the Clown 1, normally covers a lot of different stories and has long, lengthy things. She has a strike on her because Dana was on the Richie Allen show, and she thought because Richie Allen is a espouses to be a socialist and you know, like he, you were on his show, she thought, well, I could just use it. Well, they got a strike. It turns out it's it was well, a little... that was Arnie Gunnerson. Huh? That was Arnie Gunnerson on the Richie Allen show. I was talking to Jerry. Oh, that was it. Oh, oh, that was Arnie Gunnerson. Thank yeah, you for Arnie, clarifying Arnie that. I, no, that's I, okay. I thought it was your interview. Sure. So, but anyways, so she has a strike, and she's in, she's asked me specifically to say to the listeners of my radio show to please go to her Miss Milky the One Clown uh, station and copy as much of her work as she can. She doesn't want it to. It's all still valid. Look through it, and uh, you know she, she's going to have. She'll be much more active act after December when the strike comes off. So until then, she's hoping that people will mirror things and put things up. Go to her channel, mirror things, and if you see something, put it up because it is a bit of work to put up these videos on YouTube and get the information out. Like I'm sure, Dana, you're like me. This is kind of like a part-time job. In fact, for you, it's probably more of a full-time job. Well, I create all my own content, yeah. Right. And you well, Jan, Jan is taking other material and then dressing it up and posting it out there. Mm-hmm. And that's, we need that. Don't I'm not saying anything about that. I'm just like saying there's, life, that's, that's, there's, there's is a big difference, right? Yeah. I'm <laughs> doing this really stressful. Um, and But she, she has that whole litany, that whole history, all the way from 2011, accident, all the way up to present. So everybody that was reasonable speaking about it, uh, she found it and tried to post it up at her two sites, Miss Milky the Clown and Miss Milky the Clown One. And Jan, uh, you know, she burnt out five years hardcore of doing that. And none of us thought it would. You know what's really amazing, Dana? It's five years in, and people look at us like we're nuts that we're still thinking about it when it's in fact way worse than it was. Well, a lot of the isotopes in a chain reaction don't mature for 10 or 20 years. In other words, the, the, the volume of plutonium being uh, released and is increasing for a number of years before it starts to slow down. But it takes decades and centuries and millenniums before it even slows down to certain numbers. 
to what is regular number. So the whole process of a chain reaction, when that chain reaction, okay, so Chernobyl lasted 10 days. Chernobyl was 400 Hiroshima bombs worth of radiation for 10 days, but it stopped. If it had lasted all the way up until now and never stopped, Chernobyl was one third the size of any of the reactors in Japan. It was a 30% meltdown. And, but Chernobyl was also different uh, fuel. But if Chernobyl didn't stop right now, it'd be equal to 4.5 million Hiroshima bombs. Cause every wow. 10 days would have been equal to 400 Hiroshima bombs. That's Chernobyl. Yeah. So this is Chernobyl. the other mathematics thing. I heard somebody on the radio say something like, and it was actually the first time on mainstream media I heard them admit it. Chernobyl was a one third meltdown and this was three nuclear meltdowns. So it's three times as bad. Like, no, it's m- much now, worse than three now, times as yeah, bad. Yeah, now there, we got, uh, there was actually 15 plants that couldn't go in a cold shutdown and had station blackout in Japan. And these words, uh, those, uh, these are, the, are emergencies. They mm-hmm. call it station blackout. We call it a, a catastrophic event. Mm-hmm. And they call it a, can't go into cold shutdown we call it a catastrophic event and in, that's what they call it too but when they talk about it they call it a um, station black I would say well when it goes into a chain reaction what happens the reason the stuff in Japan or Chernobyl was 400 Hiroshima bombs and a Hiroshima bomb was just a single pound but for uh, a Hiroshima bomb was dropped right close to the ground so what it done was it sucked up a million tons of gravel and buildings and logs and cement, atomized and aerosol and ionized and radiated those elements and those atoms. And they became uh, the same as nuclear. And uh, now Fukushima didn't stop doing that. The fission is still going on under these reactors, still cannibalizing rocks and steel and water and cement and everything else and gravel pebbles or everything else and it atomizes and aerosols it back into the environment so it's able to produce more radioactive material than was originally put into the reactor because once it goes into a chain reaction it's consuming it can do its own chain reaction for millenniums for millions of years we don't know if it'll do that for millions but it could and why it's doing that it doesn't need anything it can just sit there and be in a chain reaction but everything that it touches, it cannibalizes because it'll, it'll chain reaction will be up around 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. And so rocks will disappear at 2,000 degree Fahrenheit temperature and turn into smoke, so to speak. And, so, and But in this case, we're talking about an enormous amount of material constantly being created and the original material is still sitting there. That's why people can't be in there for more than like maximum, even with their air filters, like 20 minutes, right? Well, close to these things, you're getting, like we think of radiation as uh, ingesting it. Like we think of atoms. But when you're close to the rods or or the reactors that have uh, broken, then, or have, you know, gone to a chain reaction. You're talking about x-rays. You're talking about neutrons. You're talking about gamma bursts. Goes right through. Yeah. Boom. So we're yeah. So we're talking about something that'll go through the building, and then so the tanks uh, firm at Fukushima, a thousand tanks. These tanks are putting out gammas and yeah. neutrons. Right. I mean, yeah. exactly. That's right. So now, forty minutes in that environment, you'll melt your organs. You'll wow. die right there. And that's uh, from the gammas, X-rays, and neutrons. These are unbelievable, unimaginable. And I know that uh, Unit 4 fuel pool was putting out around 40 billion neutrons uh, per second. Uh, one one of the counts they had per done. Uh, yeah, and so these kind of, that's like 40 billion x-rays hitting you from a hospital, right? And so this, this is like unbelievable nasty stuff. But it also, it has this phenomenon where all the material can be... Um, so you know how a screwdriver, once again, becomes magnetized on a battery. Everything can be radiated by coming in contact with the neutron beams can radiate it. And then that puts out energy. So everything becomes contaminated just from that exposed, that kind of exposure, but it's contaminated permanently. And if you liberate it into the environment, like they're burning 
uh, radioactive waste right across the country in the, in, in the actual incinerators. And they're burning it at a rate of 300,000, they claim, becquels of cesium. Now, cesium, once again, is just one of the thousands of elements that's coming at her, but it's the one that we call a tracer, and it's the one they refer to constantly. The yeah, reactors and the reactors are not cesium cores. Could you? I don't mean to be dense here, but could you say that again? <laughs> like my brain is like bing. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I, I that's why I do it all the time. I know, but this is the thing: these reactor cores. It's cesium one thirty seven. Is you're saying it's multiplying as it's coming out? Like it's increasing. It has not actually not. It's a billion times worse than it was five years ago. Is there any way that they could have stopped this? Let's say if the governments had really taken this seriously in the first six months or the first year, is there anything that they could have done to, to like go, uh, we're going to mitigate this and make it stop? Is there anything they could have done? Well, Chernobyl is sent in 600 helicopter pilots. They all died. That's not recorded officially at the uh, United right. Nations or something. But, but United Nations is scum. Right. Told, well, they, they just, you know, they, they're United uh, Nations against the people is really like, they don't care. They just lie and cheat. The IAEA has authority over the World Health Organization and actually in Chernobyl prevented them from going into Chernobyl for five years. And they only allowed them to study three types of cancer and only in children. That's why now they say, oh, it takes five years to get cancer and only in children and only produces three types of cancer that we know about. And they talk about had they been studying uh, the fallout effects on Hiroshima and Hiroshima victims. But all, all they actually study there is uh, external exposure. That's right. They don't That's right. they don't study the actual internal. They don't That's recognize right. the internal. That's right. And so these people that studied, they say we went and studied uh, Chernobyl or Hiroshima and Nagasaki. These are the lowest of the lowest of the lowest of the lowest life forms on this planet. You want These to are know, the back to what we, you said about them being saint worshippers, it reminded me of this thing that I read on my channel, and I think I'm going to reread it. The Safety of Nuclear Power by Alvin Weinberg, Dr. Alvin Weinberg, a nuclear apologist. It was given in, at a symposium at the uh, Science Writing Briefing at the New Horizon Science in Boulder, November 14, 1972. This is what this rat said. Uh, it said, however, if one thinks about it for a minute, the prolonged storage in, in vaults of waste containing plutonium-239 plutonium requires a long-term commitment to by highly intelligent managers of such waste systems. A long term by highly intelligent managers of such waste systems. That's, thus, the price ex exacted by the permanent disposal of waste in concrete vaults may be a commitment to a priesthood that will tend the vaults for times unimaginably longer than the time scale of any previous human endeavor. A commitment to a priesthood. Isn't that what these think about themselves that they are priests and they're highly intelligent they always come up with this like little snooty nose like they know the comments we get i have been stalked this week and now i'm beginning to get it because i'm you know i guess because of this radio show people know and i'm making comments this stuff is killing us and these pro-nuke liars and apologists, people like Catherine Higley who wrote that stupid paper that said a banana is this but as harmful as what's coming out of Fukushima is just an insult to our intelligence. She has an incredible, unbelievable amount of accolades of degrees and recognition. Unbelievable. She has an education that is uh, unblemished. It's inconceivable how much time and energy and degrees she actually has and how many boards she's on. But if you go listen to her lecture and you know anything about nuclear, because most people don't, but if you do happen to know something about it, you'll find out that every step, every sentence is a lie or a construct for the next lie. It's uh, utter betrayal, and they got all those degrees, and they got, and they're actually really are smart, and they're doing what they're doing on purpose. It's not an accident. They're not naive or gullible. They're, they never misrepresented it or mis misunderstood it or misread it. This is uh, ideology. And they know what they're doing is evil and wrong and dark and twisted and mental and maniacal, but uh, they find new ways to do it. And they brag about that, how difficult it is 
for them to get the public to uh, accept that it's like a banana or a potato chip. Well, the reason being is because it's not like that. But this is their this is their uh, agenda is to get people convinced and then use those people to bludgeon any opposition. Those people will come out and attack uh, any opposition because they've been sucked into that world. And not, so, like, if you were a normal person and you looked at her degrees, you would be like, well, Dana, my goodness, you know, she, she, why would she lie? Dana, that the university would take her degree away from her. And uh, sorry, that never happened in the history of uh, academics when it should happen repeatedly for the nuclear industry. Every one of them should have their degree taken away from them for coming out and lying to the population. But all the media backs the lie up with no opposition. And so you will never get on a radio show opposite Kathleen Higley. I'll never get on it. Nobody will. They'll have another so-called expert just like her there to back up what she says. No one will be there to challenge her. And if they did do that, it would never be an honest debate. It would be there to set up, make other people look stupid. Or the radio show or the television show would have to edit that clip. I mean, like, you couldn't honestly, do it. that's yeah. what happened with Kevin. Ke- when when I, Kevin was going around, when we were working together and Kevin was traveling around the country, he would get interviews. He was pretty daring. He'd walk up to people. He'd engage the media, blah, 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 blah. And he'd stand there and talk to them. And he'd, like, look serious. Kevin does great interviews. Yeah. And frankly, uh, you know, he knows a lot in his head. So. And so he did really good good interviews and rarely they would like clip out the most radical statement and just to make him look like he's yeah, like exactly. some wild person and I'm like he get on if they used it at all or this is more commonly what they did they didn't put his face on they used his voice they would use his voice over it's like, it was really devious and so it got to the guy you know he was like fuck you <laughs> really. yeah like K- KRQE Channel 13 after the WIP Waste Repository accident, I had made a video and broke down what really happened because they were lying and here was the documentation. So I come out and shared the documentation. KRQE Channel 13 came out and called me a conspiracy theorist, used a video clip of me. Now I was talking in that particular little clip they used. I said, well, the radioactive is going to fall out in your communities. It'll fall out on your children's toys. It'll fall out uh, in your drinking water and stuff like that. And we showed that the documentation of that. And they, they clipped that out and actually played that clip and then called me a conspiracy theorist. But that's exactly what happens after a nuclear accident. And I mean, they abandoned WIP because of a truck fire originally. Ten days before they admitted there was a radioactive release, even though they didn't say they were the, the same reasons. So they had a truck fire. They left the mines. There's 55 football field sized caverns down there. All they had to do was get on the other side and put the fire out and tow the truck out and keep on working. But they never went back down for 10 days. Then we had the video of the smoke coming out of the buildings from the mine. It never stopped coming out. Like a truck fire doesn't burn very long, doesn't last very long. This stuff kept going and going and going. And they never went back down in the mine. After those 10 days, they said they had it released down there. So now they couldn't go back down there after, you know, the first was the truck fire and then they had a release. It was actually the release. There was no truck fire. The media came out and showed a truck fire from an old picture. No one had been down there to take a picture. And this is a story they're still sticking to. They can't get back down in the whip because all the tunnel, the entire tunnel now is contaminated. So, like, I don't know about people who might have had uh, fires in their house that got put out, say, in their stove or something like that. And what they would have found was the top part of their home would have been all soot, covered in soot. They would have to go in and vacuum the whole house down, wash all the walls, repaint it all, throw everything away in order to salvage that house. Well, that's what happened at WIP. But that was radioactive material. And so the walls is now in the floor and the ceiling and everything. The whole environment is radiated. And so they can't, they can't get back in there. You can't clean it up. You can't contain it. You can't get in and fix the cavern where there was the accident. And you know what's really disgusting? That, that is on the One Navajo. lie after another lie after another Well, lie. that's on the Navajo Nation, and they, they did not want that. They did not want that facility there. They said no. There's a documentary about this, and they said, no, we don't want it. And you know what the U.S. government, they basically came in and told the city, you know what, either you're taking it 
you're going to take our $32 million or you're not, but we're building it. Try to stop us. That's what they said to them. And they, that's exactly why they allowed it to happen. The first, when they first opened, there was so much pollution. The first wave of children, people died, the sheep died. It was just, they are devastated by this. And with WIP, it is even far worse. It's, it's, it's criminal, really. It is really whip, whip, criminal. Whip uh, never stopped leaking. Whip you know, never it's, stopped leaking. it's kind of like St. Louis, Dana. Like, really, there is absolutely no regard for the implications for the health of our environment or our people by the people that are running our government, our it's elected, only a handful so-called of them. electeds. Small, not a, well, it's bigger than a handful, but there's only a small crew of them that are doing this to us. That's yeah, it. but you know what? There's a lot more of them because, at least in our country, we are Congress. They control the funds. They could say no. No, Congress not- goes along with it. And why? I, I actually, like, I've seen Ron Wyden change. I'll be honest. I think Ron Wyden got the little Jesus, come to Jesus talk and said, your kids will disappear, your wife will disappear, you guys will die if you don't go with us. That's what I think. He went to Fukushima four times at the beginning, and he came back after the third time, and boy, did he change his tune. He was not the same person. He was freaked out, and after, he said, look, we can't, his office said, we can't talk to you about it. It is under the Price Anderson Act. I mean, the Homeland Security Act, and we can't talk to you about it anymore. It's considered. I'm like, you guys are going to tell me because of the National Security Act that you can't, uh, the Patriot Act, and because it's been relegated to a national security issue, you can't talk to me. I'm your constituent. You can't tell me whether I'm in harm's way. They said it has been deemed a national security. They done that when the original fallout came through the country. They deemed it a national security risk. And that's why he hid those numbers away. And those numbers were a million becquels a square meter throughout North America. A million becquels. Here in British Columbia and Vancouver, uh, the major, one of the major cities here, they found, um, what was the numbers again? A 400, mil, 400 billion, I'm sorry, 400 million iodine 130 129 with a 15 million year half life from the chain reaction uh, in a liter of rainwater per liter of rainwater and so once you know that was once again you can use that as a tracer for all the other isotopes and so we knew, we got that confirmation just about a month ago 100% now finally confirmed five years later but what it shows you was that you know rain doesn't fall by the liter and British Columbia is a tropical uh, province, 26,000 islands, a very big province, and that it rains all the time. It never stops raining for some places here. And so the stuff that came across would have been rained out heavily along the coastline of uh, Canada in particular because of the rainforest that permeates through the whole coastline. And so we got pounded, we got destroyed. That's what a coastline is naked, completely naked. Because and then nobody talking about it. Washed away from the rain, right? And the University of Victoria, uh, British Columbia, Canada, and Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. Two of the two people from that institution, both marine chemists, were tasked with coming out and deceiving the population. And I was arrested for calling them lawyers. I was arrested for holding my my head up and saying, "I'm not going to sit here and take that law." And here's the law. Here's how they're doing it to you and broke it all down. And what happened when I came ashore after the five expeditions for Fukushima, I get arrested and now Almost I'm smeared. as soon as you got, you know what, they, this was the, this is the entrapment. And that was used to try to get me off the local radio That's right. station here. That's right. Right, recently, because I'm, I'm about to start a radio show, I'm hoping to, here. And that was used, that those articles, those people, were used as justification by one of the people there to keep me from getting a radio show. That was used in my own community against me because they're academics and I'm not. Therefore, I must be a bad person. That was used last week to my face against me. And of course, I went to bat against that and I'm still waiting for a decision, but it doesn't look good. It looks like I got the shaft you because mean you're of, of saying these, that they're these saying are lies. you cannot have a radio show in Canada? Because of that. You're not allowed to be, well, they could not control this show. Like you being on this radio no. show, that 
That's, That's different. But I can't have my own radio show. Now, I might get it because I do have friends. Mm -hmm. And so we're putting pressure on these people right now. But the point was is that I'm being originally denied and this has to be reviewed because I'm not even convicted of it. I've been to court five times. This is meant to bankrupt me. This was a slap suit. Well, the charges that they're giving you are so outrageous as if you could be, uh, uh, like they're saying, that, you know, the physical threat. It's like ridiculous. A physical threat. Is it like, not? Like, see, when you put it in the context of what I said, the one hour <sighs> video, it's not a threat. It's an At outburst. All. It's just an outburst. That's right. Exactly. Because I live in a hospital bed in a wheelchair for the most part for the last 15 years. I'm not even capable of hurting somebody. That's true. If but I'm entitled. I'm, in, your I'm video, entitled. They would have seen that. Like this. I'm is, entitled. Yeah. To, has to the judge watched any story. of the videos that you produced? Sorry. Has the judge watched any of the videos that you produced? No, the judge barred bananas, potato chips, and walking in sunshine. As context, and said, then the videos are. We'll let you go in a second, but the video was one hour long. But you're not allowed to use the video for context. You're not allowed to use the sentence. You're not allowed to use the video of the sentence. You're not allowed to use the audio of the sentence. You're not allowed to use the transcript of the sentence that they found offending without the context of what I said before or after, or the documentation that was there when I said it and the reason I said it, and and the out. It's an outburst, uh, and it's totally. I was. I have every right to say what I said, and in Canada, you know, I'm going to exercise that right. No, I'm not going to be beat in this one, even though they, you know, they have set the stage to try to convict me for something that is not convictable. We have about 35 seconds left. I'm sorry, I was just like, yeah, not watching okay. the clock. Go ahead. I was listening to what you were saying. Listen, thank you, Dana, for joining yeah. us and jumping back in. I hope you can join us again because this is super helpful and been really Fridays. Great. Fridays and it uh, you know the nuclear proctologist that's where people can find your work do you yeah. live stream are you allowed to live stream I am what time do you live stream get that out well, I'm just I'm, I'm broken up at this stage I'm just so, burnt out so I'm you're taking out. a rest from the live stream I'm burnt out yeah well thank you for joining me I really appreciate it seriously yeah, you're welcome honey thank you for having me yeah. hugs for everybody out there take care folks yeah put your courage feet on you guys take some action mm -hmm.